My name is Sud Balls. I'm a member of the United Church of Christ in the Villages. I'm here with Barbara Sullivan and my dog Tommy. No matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. Blessings everyone, I'm Pastor Luis and I'm so thrilled you've joined us this week for our online worship service. Today, as every Sunday, we begin by sending a joyous happy birthday and happy anniversary to everyone celebrating those two special moments in their lives. And of course, I never get tired of sending blessings of health, happiness and prosperity to all of you, especially on your special day. Brothers and sisters in Christ, please remember to read the weekly email e-news and my ministry website at myinterimpastor.com 
to stay up to date on all of our weekly activities, Bible studies, meetings, and the updates on the Sunday, November 22nd in-person worship restart for those who are able and willing to attend on that special day, if we meet all of the target goals. In addition, I wanted to share with everyone that we submitted this week a request for a small matching grant to our ministry partners at the United Church of Christ Florida Conference in support of the recording and or live streaming equipment that we need in support of the future in-person Sunday worship services. And I am pleased to report the matching grant was approved for the amount of $1,750. We're truly grateful to the Florida Conference for their financial support to help us with that special ministry. And finally, I encourage you to share this week's YouTube link of our online worship service with your family, friends, and neighbors. And of course, that can be found in my ministry website at myinterimpastor.com. So now, let's prepare for our call to worship. Our call to worship. We gather to worship together from the east, the west, the north, and the south, because we are the children of the same strong mother. We gather to worship together, black, yellow, red, brown, and white, and every shade of that glorious rainbow, because we are the offspring of the same gentle Father. We gather with different joys and sorrows, different hopes and fears, yet one people with one God, one faith, one baptism, and one communion table open to all. Sing, people of God, and rejoice in God's marvelous embrace. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. their labors rest, who to the world their steadfast faith confessed. Your name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Alleluia, alleluia. You were their rock, their refuge, and their Of gratitude. God of all generations, 
As we worship today, we offer our whole selves to you, all that we have and all that we are. Like our saints who have gone before us, we pray that you will help us be bold in mission and in witness. May we who have been given so much give freely, ministering in your compassion to the multitudes near to us and far from us. We pray this in the name of our Savior and Redeemer, Christ our Lord. Amen. The scripture lesson for today is from the New Testament book of Matthew, chapter 23, verses 1 to 12. The reading is from the New Century Version of the Bible. Hear the written word of God. Then Jesus said to the crowd and to his followers, The teachers of the law and the Pharisees have the authority to tell you what the law of Moses says. So you should obey and follow whatever they tell you but their lives are not good examples for you to follow. They tell you to do things, but they themselves don't do them. They make strict rules and try to enforce people to obey them, but they are unwilling to help those who struggle under the weight of their rules. They do good things so that other people will see them. They enlarge the little boxes holding the scriptures that they wear, and they make their special prayer cloths very long. Those Pharisees and teachers of the law love to have the most important seats at feasts and in the synagogues. They love people to greet them with respect in the marketplace, and they love to have people call them teacher. But you must not be called teacher, because you have only one teacher, and you are all brothers and sisters together. And don't call any person on earth father, because you have one father who is in heaven. And you should not be called master, because you have only one master, the Christ. Whoever is your servant is the greatest among you. Whoever makes himself great will be made humble. Whoever humbles himself will be made great. Here ends the scripture reading. This is the written word of God. Give thanks to God. This week we bring to you the names of family, friends, and neighbors in need of God's gentle embrace and healing presence in their lives. Please continue to pray with us for everyone on our prayer list and continue lifting up in prayer our wonderful brother Ken R. and Joe, those now having to face the challenges of the continued fires across California and those impacted by Hurricane Zaya, 
across Louisiana, across the path of Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia, and beyond. Prayers also, as I've noted the last couple of weeks, for thousands of hurting, poor, working and middle Americans throughout the country struggling financially due to the economic impact of the coronavirus. Brothers and sisters, join me in this time in a moment of prayer. God of the path of hope and life's amazing road, we come this moment to embrace your presence, to be in prayer for those who are hurting, in the diversity of ways in which we pain, to each and beyond we send words of healing, words of embrace, words of joy. We will confess you as the gentle wind that blows when we least expect it, as the pleasant embrace when we need it most, and as the God of the empty tomb in whom we trust. To you we give the glory and the honor, now and forever. Amen. Join me, friends in these words. O oh God, we thank you for your presence this day and the fact that we can come together to believe in your amazing grace and your incredible embrace. We bring all these folks in our prayer as brothers and sisters and neighbors and friends and family who are yearning to be set free, to experience your embrace. To them we send blessings and hope and grace and redemption through your amazing presence and power in our lives. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You should see at the villages, family and friends. My message for today is not intended to be a political statement. I don't want you for a moment to misconstrue it to be a, a war cry to go to the ballot box on November the 3rd and vote on candidates X, Y, and Z. Absolutely not. Although never afraid of doing so, there are three subjects I generally avoid preaching about. First, money. Second, politics. And third, a three-letter word that ends with an X. For the record, I've never preached in a pulpit about number three. For the past 25 plus years of ministry in congregational and military settings, I've been a student and observer of organizational dynamics with a keen interest in organizational leadership. That's because I believe good to great leadership is central to living together in harmony and in making a difference in the world. Good to great leadership matters. It's wonderful to be around good to great leaders in any setting in life, especially in communities of faith. Kingdoms, governments, corporations, institutions, congregations, and even families have fallen and failed in the presence of the opposite of good to great leadership, that is, poor to pathetic leadership. I know a good number of churches who have literally lost everything because of what this kind of leadership can do. Leadership, similar to decency, is something difficult to define with perfect accuracy, suitable across every domain in which leadership takes place, but one thing is clear. You know it when you see it. And that leads me to today's lectionary reading. Apparently, this idea of you know it when you see it is something Jesus addressing, confronted in his ministry on numerous occasions. We see it in our lectionary reading for this Sunday. One of the best books that I've ever read on 
the subject of leadership, is titled Team of Teens, New Rules of Engagement for a Complex World. It was written by retired Army four-star General Stanley McChrystal and three other great contributors. As you may recall, General McChrystal, in his last and final military assignment, served as the commander of U.S. and NATO forces in Afghanistan between 2009 and 2010. The primary theme of the book is centered around the fascinating magic that can take place when leaders learn to lead with and by teams rather than leading by believing they have all the answers and the success of the institution they lead depends on me rather than we. In the book, General McChrystal made the intriguing observation that leading and being a good leader sometimes requires one to become a gardener, someone who tends and nurtures a garden. Let's listen to the good general's thinking on this idea. Quote, Leading as a gardener meant that I kept the task force focused on clearly articulated priorities by explicitly talking about them and by leading by example. It was impossible to separate my words and my actions because the force naturally listened to what I said but measured the importance of my message by observing what I did. If the two were incongruent, my words would be seen as meaningless pontifications." Unquote. Oh my gosh, I think the good general just quoted Jesus from Matthew's Gospel lesson for today. That's exactly what Jesus was suggesting when addressing the hypocrisy of those in positions of political and religious power during his time. That's exactly what he meant after so often observing the leaders of his first century community saying one thing yet practicing the other, setting strict rules yet breaking every one of them by the sheer presence of their hypocrisy, wanting everyone to respect them in the presence of others but treating the lowly with mere contempt. Wrapping themselves around the metaphorical flag of the beauty of their religious roots, when in fact that was nothing more than just a show. Yes, as I quoted a couple of sermons ago, power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Poor and pathetic leaders do that. They're experts in it. Jesus, referring to the leaders of his community, said, The teachers of the law and the Pharisees have the authority to tell you what the law of Moses says, so you should obey and follow whatever they tell you. But their lives are not good examples for you to follow. They tell you to do things, but they themselves don't do them. They make strict rules and try to force people to obey them, but they are unwilling to help those who struggle under the weight of their rules. And then he ends this, this instructive, wonderful message with these words. Whoever is your servant is the greatest among you. Whoever makes himself great will be made humble. Whoever makes himself or herself humble will be made great. Oh, that leads me to the fascinating dilemma of where we are as we prepare for November 3rd. I promise you in the beginning that my message for today is not intended to be a political statement. My message for today is a theological statement. And as a theological statement, I'm inviting you to consider, before you exercise the privilege of your vote, to ask yourself whether whom you choose, for whatever political office that might be, exhibits the authentic attributes of good to great leadership as measured by the standards set by none other than Jesus of Nazareth. Based purely on today's lesson, these might be the kinds of questions we might want to ask before we drop our ballot in the ballot machine. Do they lead by example? Are, are, are their lives really genuine and good examples for us to follow? 
Do they exhibit the characteristics of someone who doesn't care whether they sit in the fancy grandstands of the wealthy or the bleachers of working folks living and working with a minimum wage? Do they truly, really, truly understand that he or she who serves is the greatest among you and me? The greatness, real greatness, lies in humility. You know, the when you see it, you just simply know it. If the answer to each of or all of these questions is no, then I invite you to run as fast and as far as away as you can from them and follow the ways of Jesus. A way that models not the power of the sword, but the power of love. A way that rules not from a throne, but from a cross and an empty tomb. A way that shows him entering Jerusalem, not on a great white horse, but on a donkey. A way that demonstrates that he came not to cater to the powerful, but to remind us that the meek and weak shall inherit the earth. A way that proves he chose his inner circle, not from among the Ivy League colleges or titans of industry or prestigious institutions of his day, but from among the fishing community, revolutionary zealots, tax-collecting industry, and from among pretty common folks just like you and me, who years later transformed the world with the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Having done so, we will have understood Jesus' ways of living, caring, serving, living, and, oh yes, even voting. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise to our God and our Redeemer. With all of God's people on earth and all of the company of heaven, we praise God's name and rejoice in God's glorious liberation. Friends in Christ, this table belongs to the one who loved us, and we're reminded that all are invited and none is excluded. Therefore, exactly where you are, Join with me in the Lord's table. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, eat in memory of him. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new cup in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as long as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Brothers and sisters, drink in memory of him. Let us pray. But God, we thank you for this opportunity to share in this humble moment of the celebration of your table. It belongs to you and all are invited. We bless your holy name this day and every day in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. UCC and the Villages family live the ways of Jesus. Always invite to the table of God's banquet all who are excluded. Live humbly, pray without ceasing, embrace the neighbor, seek an opportunity to serve the other, love justice, and go in peace in the name of God the Creator.
Christ the Redeemer and the Spirit our Liberator. Amen.